This thing slaps harder than Will Smith at the Oscars. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV, well actually not here at Bish's RV, with Bish's RV here at Winnebago Towable headquarters today at your request. A lot of folks have been writing in and saying, Josh, uh, Winnebago has this new model that looks absolutely awesome, but uh, I can't find any good video of it. And I made arrangements with Winnebago and they pulled one in here on a snowy winter day so that we could get this footage. So if you appreciate how we get away from the office and you appreciate how Winnebago set us up today, uh, hit that like button, leave us a little note that says thank you and subscribe if you're new with us. And I tell you what, every RV has to have a name. This thing ought to be called Tabasco because it's got the hot sauce. This might be one of the very best couples camping floor plans I think I've ever, ever seen. Um, if you saw my video on the Cougar 23 MLE fifth wheel, they basically kind of did that in a travel trailer. But what they did in the living room and kitchen area by creating like an extended bar with just insane prep space, good campsite window coverage, especially when you're sitting down, it feels very organic. And then the fact that you've got this like slide open dining desk uh, multi-function thing with a pair of fold away guest chairs. This, I think I've seen so many requests. People say, what if instead of a dinette, I had an extra bar and like I could turn it into a desk instead of doing the DIY retrofit at home with the hacksaw Jim Duggan, you, they, they've done it right from the factory. And I guarantee you, now that I've seen it, more and more brands are gonna try doing this. I'm really curious about your feedback. What do you think about this concept of a window facing dining desk in place of a traditional booth or table in chairs? It almost feels like we need a third option now. There, this thing has amazing travel access. It has awesome storage, true queen bed in a private bedroom. So, so many good qualities and very few points of concern for my personal book. Uh, there's some weird things about this. I'm going to share the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. I've already talked enough, obviously. Let's get inside and see all the cool, fun, new features this one has to offer. And I want to hear your thoughts on this. And I think what's so great here is this not only has just a killer floor plan, like as I personally feel, and it's just my two cents. I'm not the, the final authority on anything by any means. I personally feel this is one of the best couples camping floor plans I've seen created in such a very long time, but it's also got some interesting, pretty unique qualities. So many travel trailers, they're just copy and paste, interchangeable from one brand to the next. You just slap on a new sticker, a new color, and they are hyper, hyper similar. Winnebago does some things differently. They kind of built their own rule set. So these minis used to be six and a half foot tall inside. They are very interesting six foot eight ceiling height because what they actually did is they used a low profile air conditioner so that they didn't increase their overall exterior height, but they did increase their interior living space. It's a very kind of different way that they've gone about it here, which I think is very, very cool. Now, uh, another major detail on this one is you have some swaptions when it comes to the seating. I think the theater seating here that we're looking at is gonna be the most popular, but there's also a trifold sleeper sofa and you dinette uh, options all available in here. And the reason you can tell that is if you see a theater seat and there's room for side stands on both sides of it, that's a that's a, uh, a slide space, that's a, that's a seating area that's big enough to accommodate a true you dinette So I'd be kind of curious, which seating setup would you like on yours? And I love how they put household and USB plugs on both those sets of outlets. Another thing that really opens this one up is the fact that that refrigerator is installed in the slide out. It gets it out of the way. But being fair, um, that does mean that uh, if you're tall like me and you're not paying attention and you're walking the fridge, this can happen. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, avoid that wherever possible. Now back here in the kitchen, the kitchen in this thing's incredible. Awesome storage. And I, I will like there's about an acre of countertop space here there's more countertop prep space in this rv than i see in some luxury fifth wheels like this rivals a giant 382 alliance full timing fifth wheel in terms of countertop prep space but the kitchen arrangements a little unconventional personally my midwestern park camping routes it works very well for me up top here we do have a convection microwave but when we slide down you might notice there's not an oven however 
Winnebago didn't forget about our southern cousins who like their cookies and biscuits. Um, it is oven prepped. Basically, there is a propane line uh, effectively that you could run to that space, uh, install an oven, and if you know you like this thing, but you're like, man, uh, that oven's a deal breaker. I love everything about this, but I have to have an oven. Keep in mind, it is something that can be accomplished here. Now, when you sit over here at the theater seating like I'm at, you suddenly start to get key into the fact that you have some really good window coverage. Now, the TV is mounted up a little high. When you kick back in the theater seat, I don't think it's too bad. But once again, that's just my two cents. And I really, uh, you know, welcome your input and your opinions here. Now, this is actually kind of uh, cool how they're really good about putting the toe kicks down at the base of like every cabinet that you see right here. They make sure that, you know, you can really stand like right up next to the bar space. And as you've already seen in our floor plan in a flash, you got that desk area and I will see that or show that for you in far more detail. I'm kind of curious. I think I know the answer to this, but um, do you like or dislike the little level exchange there on the countertop? Considering how much prep space there is in the kitchen proper, I'm uh, I'm not too worried about it, but uh, I know some people prefer to have everything on one level. I don't know. I'm just I'm kind of curious about your opinions there. Did you notice the um, countertop level power outlets on the rear wall? By the way, right where you want them, where they're easy to get to. They have just nailed a bunch of things. They have a bang up lighting package in here. It really lightens and brightens up. There's a couple areas though in that big deep slide, like next to the fridge. It does feel a little dim, but I mean, I'm I'm searching for trouble with a map and glasses over here. Overall, this thing is great. Now, if you're uh, preferring the more cuddle compliance, you might want to go with the hide a bed instead of the theater seat because that does put that hard divider between you and your little sweetie num nums beside you, <laughs> or whatever pet name you have for one another. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I think I've said in a long time, and that's saying something. I say a lot of stupid things. Now, what's interesting, I don't even know if they needed to do it, but take a look at this. That TV can pivot around, uh, so you can see, I don't, I don't know why you'd want it to, but you could. And again, when you want it, there's a little slide-open desk, like, countertop extension drawer kind of thing and a pair of fold away guest chairs that you can bust out when and if you want them so if you want to actually uh you know sit down and and have a bite to eat you don't want to do some dinofa dining over there at the theater seat or the hide bed you can do that what's also i think kind of cool is if you are entertaining some like let's say you've got grandkids over for the weekend or something like that uh, you could have the kids at their little desk station there keeping themselves occupied while you're in the theater seat enjoying your entertainment and keeping an eye on everything. You know, your campsite, you've got crossbreeds windows like crazy in this. In the, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed the kitchen storage in this is incredible. They have really crushed the kitchen storage. Now, I will also tell you, the camera doesn't see the lower kitchen cabinets quite properly. They're probably reading as black on camera. They are not. They're actually like this interesting deep navel blue um, uh, or navy blue, some people might call it, but I, I don't know why. For some reason, the RV industry tend to see navel blue, uh, not like belly button navel, but you get the idea, like on the water. <laughs> um, and I began to, you know, how do you feel about that? Now they don't offer different cabinet swaptions options that's just the color package that they're rocking in the free world over here uh as i believe uh van morrison might have said but um you know you, you you get the idea i'd be curious to know your input on that and overall what do you think about the living room layout on this like i, I think like i said for just a couple people this is such a dynamite arrangement now somebody might wonder what if I don't want all that? What if I just want like a normal dining? I don't believe that's offered. This is how they're building it because they've standardized the camp kitchen. They need that big bulky block of countertop space there, but it, I love it. I love that it's different. I love that it gives us options because there are other manufacturers with some similar layouts to this. So if you do prefer like a table and chairs or a booth dinette or whatever, that kind of stuff is available just from different brands. And that's why I think it's so fun having access to all these different products. Notice how they're just doing the mirror on the wall over here. And that means, uh, you know, that there's not a big medicine cabinet in your way. 
but you might have noticed how they are actually giving us an awesome lipid storage storage galorage cabinet over here um the uh the, the hinges on these like to help keep the doors closed which is nice and they uh they changed something that, I, that i'm really happy about they used to have these really sharp corner square handles and they radius and soft edged all that stuff so it's not uh <laughs> potentially ripping up your uh your anythings if you go near them i actually ripped my leg open one time on one of those sharp handles in a uh, in a winnebago uh before i was quite aware of what all was going on there now uh you can see right here porcelain foot flush stool some awesome space around it and uh one of the other things i thought was really interesting here is because they do go with a little bit taller ceiling you can see that i was just able to stand in that shower. Now, I'm to give you the reference point, I'm just over six foot tall myself. I'm not the biggest guy, I'm not the smallest, but that shower, that nice big rectangular shower, I had enough headroom, especially with the skylight where it was at, uh, elbow room, like this was, I, I think, a nicely spacious setup here. And in case you're curious, my Southern folks, once again, not only can you get an oven, uh, but these are uh, able to be outfitted with a second factory air conditioner, or this is something that could be added after the fact with 50 amp service. Uh, so that if you really want to turn this bedroom into an ice box and start breathing icicles, you can do that. And that is a 60 by 80 true queen. That is not the bed goblin union short bed uh, where the little guys with razor sharp teeth who hang out under the bed, try to rip your toes off if they hang off the edge of the bed. You don't have to worry about that here. Now they don't fully enclose the uh, upper shelf area there, which actually is kind of nice because it makes the room look and feel bigger, but it also doesn't enclose the storage. I've heard some people like to get like little baskets or something like that, and that tends to work pretty well, but anybody with experience with a similar overhead shelf with that little, you know, don't fall down stuff lip, leave me a comment, let me know how well that's actually worked for you. Now, uh, up here in the bedroom, taking a look at all the storage, you've got your dual hanging wardrobe closets, household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, an individual drawer on both sides of the bed, which I think is absolutely awesome. This is not one uh, that you're, you're going to feel super like enclosed uh, inside. You know, you're not going to feel real uh, claustrophobic or anything like that. And you saw that there's that full, you know, foot locker storage trunk under the bed. Overall, the bedroom arrangement is pretty commonly done but i like how they're giving us frankly like a two like two level side stands over here you've got an upper and lower shelf with your power outlets on the lower and then just kind of a little upper storage pocket instead of an extra deep closet that you could never reach back there and look like you're giving an elf an, an enema that is nerdism number 37 if you're keeping track now flip it around the other direction one of the other things here is um, they always have, you know, bedroom TV hookups, but that's where most brands leave off. Winnebago does offer you the option, at least, of a factory-installed bedroom TV, which I think is kind of cool. Now, sometimes I like to pick my own TV, um, you know, because some factories don't really give you some nice hardware. And sometimes it's also really nice just to have it done straight from the factory. Which way would you prefer? Like, would you want this bedroom with or without the TV? I'm kind of curious since we don't see that very often. Now, obviously, I got the slide closed for road mode. And once again, very similar to that Cougar 23 MLE fifth wheel, this one absolutely crushes the road mode cracker barrel test. Uh, you walk in here, I mean, if you want to stop and, and, you know, do some buffet prep, you've got all that prep space still. You can get to your cabinetry space. You can get to your sink. Um, you can obviously get your microwave since it's mounted in the slide and not behind the slide. That's one of the genius points of this floor plan. And one of the things I was kind of curious about is can you still get to this stuff back here? And it's a little tight, but if you really, really, really needed to get into that cabinet over there, you should still be able to do that. So, I mean, personally, uh, in terms of travel function, I'm going to give this thing... Uh, you know, maybe not an A plus, but not an A minus. I'm just going to give it a flat old plain Jane A. And this thing crushes the Cracker Barrel test. My personal opinion. What's your take? And by the way, right by the door, you have a handy little wireless phone charge pad right there, which is really handy if you want to like, uh, you know, be Bluetooth in your music. You just want to reach inside, turn that up down when you need to. 
it's great to be able to like just reach in and grab your phone but i know that when i camp i don't always wear shorts that have pockets i don't always have my phone on me nor do i always want it on me but it's nice to know that i can just hop over and grab it real quick now stepping outside here if we start talking towing um i think this one has quite a bit of half ton potential it's going to really kind of depend on the specific um, capacities of your half ton, as well as where you're towing it. Because like, you know, if you're going through hills and mountains, uh, a lot of gas half tons lose a lot of horsepower, up to 50% of their horsepower. When you start getting into thinner air with less oxygen at elevations, that's something a lot of people don't talk about. So you might want to go three quarter depending on where you're at. But in flatland Southern Michigan, late model tow package half ton should handle this thing pretty readily. Um, and uh, I tell you what, uh, they've got a full factory solar package on the roof. Well, I say full factory. They've got a 200 watt uh, factory solar package up on the roof, 30 amp charge controller, but they are still prepped for that uh, side solar prep plug if you want to have a, a portable kind of job. You can see the slam latches and magnet holdbacks, and those are sealed piano hinges as well. But look inside here, wide baggage doors, big compartment on both sides. Again, if I'm gonna be nitpicky, I just kind of wish that that, um, that power switch, your disconnect switch, was mounted up higher away from shifting cargo. But notice how there is a heat register down here. This is actually a forced air heated front compartment, which very, very few travel trailers have. And considering this cavity is directly under your bed, that, uh, you know, if you're doing that spring and fall camping, that might help you sleep comfy at night. Now, sliding over to the other side of that full pass-through compartment right here, um, I saw somebody leave a comment on one of my videos recently that Winnebago doesn't put any, any seals in their baggage doors, and that's just literally not correct. Uh, I don't know where that concept came from, but like if you go back in that footage a little bit, you could actually see them there. Uh, power tongue jack up front, most trailers tend to have stuff like that. Room for two batteries, uh, you know, room for 30 pound propane tanks if you're so inclined. 20s I believe are standard, 30s being optional. And as the sticker up front indicates, they are using a little bit different frame and chassis on these. I haven't talked about that much recently, it occurs to me, but it is an aircraft style huck bolted frame by Norco. It's not an LCI, it's not a Lippert chassis. Um, the whole idea behind this is that it's using HSLA steel, high strength, low alloy, which is lighter, thinner, but stronger. It's just a higher grade material. A lot of times when you hear thinner, your uh-oh alarms start going off, but it's just a better grade material effectively. Now, something that's very cool is these are power stabilizers, but they use individual switches for each individual stabilizer. Uh, they, they're not like a, a V-pivot kind of scissor system. Enclosed underbelly, radiant barrier, and holding tank heaters are all standard on this, which people start asking that question, is it for seasons? If you watch my videos on the regulars, you know that I don't believe in the concept of a quote four seasons camper. And if you get in the um, you know full-time RVing groups, uh, after we've had some really nasty cold snaps, you'll see exactly why I say that. Even the biggest, baddest fifth wheels with the best insulation packages are not made for the kind of weather that mother earth can throw at her. So kind of keep that in mind. So basically, if the snowflakes are flying, if it dips below freezing tonight and comes back tomorrow, this camper will be okay. If it's going to stay hard frozen around zero degrees, it's not proven for that. So keep that. I'm just kind of keen in. Look at the awning. Look at how big that awning is. Oh, baby. And the door is dead in the middle of the awning. You know why that's cool? Because if it's raining and you're going stir crazy and you want to expand your living space, you can go outside. And since the awning arm is not right next to the entry door, you're not going to get spritzed in the face. That is really cool. Um, regular viewers will know my two thoughts on the comment section there, but for those who are not regular viewers, if the regular viewers could fill them in in the comment section, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, because they went with that, that like dining desk buffet serving station epic extended countertop, they had a cavity that they could do something with and they put a very nice low profile camp kitchen in this thing. You got your little uh, outdoor mini fridge, dad's medicine cabinet for the bottled water and the barley pop and a real sink 
with a real drain into a holding tank, but down here at like belly level where you can actually reach it. Or if you're a little shorter than me, maybe chest level. But the fact is it's not way above your head. I like the extra outlets out there. And this is kind of cool. You've got a slide open grill that becomes a slide open griddle if desired. Uh, very handy if you're looking for some hot stuff, baby, this evening. Some hot stuff, baby, tonight. Who picked up the Donna Summer reference there? It wasn't exactly subtle. Goodyear uh, Endurance Radial Standard on these. You may have noticed a couple little black boxes mounted on the forward wall in the front pass-through compartment. One of those was the 30 amp charge controller. One of those was prep for TPMS. So if you do want to get a tire pressure monitoring system, this one is basically set up to just uh, stick one on and then you calibrate it to your phone and your phone will you know, chirp at you with whatever updates uh, that are needed. Now, the uh, back here, you've got both a rear bumper and an accessory hitch. That's 250 pounds for accessories, by the way. Um, backing up here, you see a full hot, cold outside utility shower. You may have noticed you have in the camp kitchen a real sink with a drain and next to it, a, uh, a cold water like garden hose style sprayer. And they still have the outside kitchen. And kind of like how they're giving you a rear bumper and a, uh, a rear receiver hitch, Winnebago is really kind of excelling at giving you and instead of or here. And today's Winnebago mini moment brought to you by absolutely no one because I don't do sponsored content. I try to always let you know this is my, now a lot of this might be sometimes my personal opinion, but it's always, you know, clear of influence from outside third parties. I wanted to also give you a quick little overview on some construction. Um, Winnebago is using Asdell in their sidewalls. Uh, the, your sidewalls are an all aluminum framed uh, structure. You do have um, plywood floor decking, 5 8 tongue and groove plywood flooring, so you don't have to worry about soft spots developing over time. Uh, you also have uh, aluminum joists in the floor. Up top, you've got a fully walkable roof. You see that ladder back there. And just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a peek up there, let's flip the camera around and hop upstairs. As you can see, uh, like I said, you know, fully walkable, you can see me cruising around this thing up there and then up top you've got a 200 watt factory solar package but with that 30 amp charge controller you should be able to uh, expand on that a little bit so if you're looking for a little extra solar you could add more panels to the roof but also keep in mind you still have that portable side mount prep plug and with that receiver hitch on the back if you wanted to get like a little generator tray or something like that and really take this thing off grid and be and want to have full use of all your functions well they've kind of made it so that you can sort of do whatever you want with this so once again let me know what you think if you'd like this again in a more fifth wheel version cougar makes that um, there are some other things kind of similar in the travel trailer world, like an Imagine um, 22 MLE, a Cougar 22 MLS, and a whole bunch of things like that. But instead of just saying copy and paste and making the same floor plan over again, I have huge respect that Winnebago gave it a little bit of a half, well, you know, really they gave this thing, I think, like three different little half twists. I like this. I like this. I, I'm going to have to really sit down and, uh, you know, th this is definitely going in my personal travel trailer top five for the 23 season. When I put that video together later this year, I can guarantee you are going to see this model in there. I like this. I like what I see. I like this a lot. But that's my two cents. Well, maybe two and a half cents with inflation. <laughs> now that I've said the dreaded I word, I'm sure YouTube will flag me. But neither here nor there. I've talked a lot. What do you think about this one? Good, bad, ugly, everything. Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? I would love to get some feedback back to the factory. Overall, I, I think that they've pretty much crushed this layout uh, in total. But uh, when you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.